hello guys welcome to my channel in this video we will learn about Oliver Goldsmith's play she stoops to conquer she stoops to conquer or the mistakes of a knight is a comedy which was written by Oliver Goldsmith Oliver Goldsmith was born an Irish man he later wrote poems and plays in English language he was a very famous you know playwright of the late 18th century his fam famous poem is the deserted village so our concern is the comedy she stoops to conquer she stoops to conquer if we categorize it it falls in the category of comedy of manners or particularly belated comedy of manners we can also say it is a it is an anti-sentimental comedy now this anti-sentimental comedy this you know came up as a genre in the middle eight, middle of the 18th century as a you know response to the sentimental comedies which were being written by uh, Richard Steele and Richard Cumberland these two persons so what they did they means here Oliver Goldsmith and Richard Brinsley Sheridan they both wrote in the tradition of anti-sentimental comedy because they wanted to defend their comedies the true comedy we can say because the sentimental comedy that Richard Steele and Richard Cumberland wrote they were basically you know uh, sentimental in mode sentimental in the sense that they produced among the audience sentimental tears so the genuine comedy was somehow missing in their comedies Oliver Goldsmith dedicates his play to Dr. Samuel Johnson and after the dedication the play begins so at first we have the prologue of the play the prologue was written by David Garrick David Garrick was a famous actor in contemporary times he used to act basically in Shakespearean plays and he was a very famous actor so he wrote the prologue for Oliver Goldsmith in the prologue we see one of the characters comes on the stage he is dressed in black he is kind of lamenting the death of the muse of comedy so why he is doing so because the recent tradition of and sentimental comedies the sentimental comedies have less laughter and more sentimental tears so the sentimental comedies used to move the audience and they made the audience emotionally uh, unwell therefore the comedies also produced sentimental tears among the audience that is why the genuine comedy was missing in the sentimental comedies so therefore in response to these comedies and because the sentimental comedies were producing tears among the audience the muse of comedy was dying so the character who is dressed in black he is lamenting the sickness of the muse of comedy that is why he says that the muse of comedy is dying because as you know that sentimental comedies are prevailing on the English stage and there is no way to save her only a doctor who has came here last night has some medicine the fry uh, and the doctor is actually Oliver Goldsmith he has five drops of potion potion is a kind of medicine which can save the muse so indirectly the character is trying to say that Oliver Goldsmith has a play which has five acts and these five acts can save the 
muse of comedy because this comedy will have genuine laughter in that so this is how the prologue begins and after prologue the first act of the play begins in the house in the traditional old house of mr hardcastle medical hard mr hardcastle lives in a country and his friend is sir charles marlow so sir charles marlow has proposed a match between his son and mr hardcastle's daughter kate now let us consider the main characters of the play we have several characters in the play including uh, male characters and female characters also and there are also some maids and servants so we are introduced with mr hadcastle mrs hadcastle their daughter kate and their son tony lumpkin in the first act now kate that is that is miss hadcastle she is the daughter of mr hadcastle by a previous marriage and likewise tony lumpkin that is the son of mrs hadcastle is also by a previous marriage so tony lumpkin is the stepson of mr hadcastle and kate is the step daughter of mrs hadcastle so there is also miss neville whom in the play tony calls constance so she is also a relative of them of his heart castle and she she is in love with mr marlow's friend hastings who is also coming with marlow to visit mr heart castle's house now the main confusion begins in the second act when tony lumpkin is making you know mischief and drinking ale that is wine with his friends mr young marlow and mr hastings they as they are new in the region they are searching for the way to reach mr hardcastle's house but however they have lost their way and they come to the ale house and tony lumpkin after knowing that this gentlemen are going to mr hardcastle's house he you know plots how to take revenge on his stepfather because mr hardcastle has been insulting him all the year therefore he sends mr marlow and mr hastings to mr hardcastle's house but telling them that it is an inn i double n inn inn means basically a uh, resident where travelers can you know stay it can be like a hotel or a lodge so they they reach the house of mr hardcastle but thinking it an inn so it was the plot of tony lumpkin now after they reached the house of mr hardcastle as they believe that it is an inn they behave with mr hardcastle in a manner that most travelers behave with an innkeeper they do not know that mr hardcastle is the you know father of the daughter whom they are going to you know visit so that is why both hastings and marlow behave with mr hardcastle in a very rude or you know abusive manner because they think that he is an innkeeper and they do not want quote unquote much philosophy from a from an innkeeper however mr hardcastle thinks that it is because marlow has been staying in london therefore it must be the culture of london or the culture of the young people living in london that they behave in such a way so at first he accepts his you know behavior 
but later he becomes also very much angry at the impudence of both of them however hastings meets miss neville in the house of mr hardcastle so hastings comes to know that it is not an inn actually but the actual house of mr hardcastle but even after knowing this both of them miss neville and hastings they planned not to tell all this to marlow and to keep him in confusion then mr marlow is informed that miss hardcastle whom he was going to visit has already come to the inn and she wants to meet mr marlow so uh, so it is a feature of the character of marlow that he feels comfortable with the ladies of the lower class but he feels very uncomfortable and cannot you know speak properly or becomes very much shy when he use when he is with the upper class ladies so as miss hardcastle is his would be wife therefore he feels very uncomfortable when miss hardcastle comes in the room he even did not raise his head he even does not look at the face of miss hardcastle he is so you know uncomfortable with her he only speaks a little bit and then leaves the room this makes kate that is miss hardcastle think that marlow is a very reserved person and a kind of sentimental person but she also believes that there is something in his character which is apparently not evident in her eyes therefore he you know makes a plan to reveal the reality of his character and in order to do so she stoops that mean she dresses herself as a barmaid she pretends to be a barmaid she disguises herself as a barmaid and later comes before marlow and as i have said before it is the quality of marlow's character that he can very well you know he is very outspoken and free with the women of lower class so when miss hardcastle disguises in as a barmaid mr marlow speaks with her flirts with her freely so this is also witnessed by mr hardcastle whom miss hardcastle previously told that he is a reserved person he is very shy so they both feel confused what is the about what is the real character of marlow so however in the other plot we see that mrs hardcastle that is the mother of tony lumpkin she has kept safe a fortune of miss neville so miss neville inherits a fortune that is a jewelry box a very valuable jewelry box and mrs hardcastle wants to keep it with her and that is why she wants to give the marriage between uh, tony lumpkin and miss neville so that the jewelry box will remain to her forever but both of them tony lumpkin and miss neville they do not like each other tony lumpkin detests miss neville he likes another country girl named bed bouncer and 
he thinks that he is not of age he is not of proper age to declare his own wills against his mother and father so he is waiting for that time so that at that time or at that age he can refuse or reject miss neville forever and when he comes to know about the love affair between miss neville and mr hastings he promises hastings to help them to elope to france he also promises hastings that he will steal the jewelry box from his mother's you know treasure box and he will give it to hastings and he will also make arrangement for horses so that they can elope very fast but after stealing the jewelry box when tony lumpkin hands it over to hastings hastings gives it to marlo saying that he will keep it safe but however marlo gives it back to mrs hartcastle thinking that mrs hartcastle is the only person who can keep the thing safe so at last miss neville and hastings decided that they have to elope without the jewelry box however it is because they come to know about mr charles marlow's arrival to mr hartcastle's house that is why they make haste for their elopement so in the next act we see that hastings is waiting at the back of the garden for tony lumpkin because he has promised him previously that he will arrange for the horses and he sends a letter to tony lumpkin saying that he is waiting in the back of garden back of the garden but as we know tony lumpkin is is you know an illiterate boy he cannot read properly therefore he hands over the letter to his mother mrs hartcastle and as soon as mrs hartcastle reads the letter she comes to know all about their plottings and he she decides that she will keep miss neville to auntie pedigree's house where she will be in strict observ observations therefore she will not be able to make any love affair with anyone there that is why she orders tony lumpkin to make arrangement for their journey to auntie pedigree's house which is very far away now as tony lumpkin has understood his mistakes he tries to recompense the mistakes mistakes he has done so what he does that he rides the coach in which uh, his mother intends to go to auntie pedigree's house but however tony does not take them or the coach to auntie pedigree's house instead he takes them round the house and at last stops the coach at the back of the garden and mrs hartcastle thinks that they have come far away from their house but actually they are still in their own house and at that time tony in order to frighten his mother he says that they are on a highway and the highway is known for the haunting of robbers at that moment mr hartcastle is having his evening walk and tony lumpkin says to her mother that it must be a robber who is coming towards them so mrs hartcastle as she is frightened she hides under a bush and mr hartcastle talks with tony asking him who was 
what he is doing there. So Mrs. Hatcastle thinks that the highwayman is trying to kill his son. Therefore, he comes to Mr. Hatcastle and appealing to him that not to kill his son. But at that time, Mr. Hatcastle assures her that she is in her own house and he is no highwayman but he is her own husband and at that time Mrs. Hatcastle realizes that it was all the mischief of Tony. On the other hand when Mr. Marlowe comes to know that it is not actually an inn but it is the house of Mr. Hardcastle and his father that is Sir Charles Marlowe is coming to the house he makes haste to leave the house as soon as possible and he meets at the time he meets Miss Hardcastle as a barmaid and she says that she is actually not a barmaid but a poor relation of Mr. Hardcastle and she tries to reveal the character of Mr. Marlowe and earlier she had told his father and Sir Charles Marlowe to hide behind a curtain to see what Mr. Marlowe and how Mr. Marlowe talks to her. So she talks about rank that she is a poor relation of Mr. Hardcastle and she is not of a higher strata woman that is why she thinks that Mr. Marlowe would not marry her but Marlowe says that he will he would have married her but it is only because of his father that he cannot at the moment marry her so at this time Mr. Hardcastle and his father Sir Charles Marlowe comes out of the garden and meets confronts Marlowe and it is the end of the play then Mrs. Hardcastle and Tony enter they Mrs. Hardcastle say to Mr. Hardcastle that Miss Neville his dear niece has gone with Mr. Hastings but immediately Mr. Hastings and Miss Neville enter they told Mr. Hardcastle that they have not eloped because Miss Neville did not agree to elope without the fortune and without the permission of Mr. Hardcastle. So at the time Sir Charles Marlowe praises of Hastings and he agrees that it will be a good couple. And at last Mr. Hardcastle tells Tony Lumpkin that you can now reject your cousin Miss Neville and Tony Lumpkin does so then it is the plot is reconciled Hastings is united with Miss Neville and Kate Hardcastle is united with Mr. Marlowe thus the play ends with uh, reconciliation and marriage similar to the in a manner of the Shakespearean romantic comedies so it was the summary of the play she stoops to conquer I hope you like the discussion if you do so please share with your friends